Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at the point uh, about handling spiritual ones uh, with uh, caution. Uh, we are in chapter three where we are talking about people. Okay, so uh, we will find these kind of spiritual, super spiritual people in our team uh, who don't want to listen to the leader, uh, who want to do whatever they sense they want to do, but they will say that God spoke to us or uh, this is what God is leading me to do. But, uh, you know, for such people, we need to avoid entrusting them with responsibility. Uh, they cannot be trusted because they do not, uh, they're not aligning themselves with the vision, the direction, uh, with uh, what, you know, we are leading or guiding with uh, God's guidance. Um, uh, but if a person is really spiritual, you know, they don't, uh, they will not impress people with, uh, you know, by saying that uh, God spoke to me and so on. Uh, but we will just see to their life of uh, humility and uh, submission, okay? Uh, their life and the fruit, what uh, their lives manifest, uh, will always be in accordance uh, with the Spirit and the Spirit's uh, leading, okay? The next one is, um, you know, when as a leader or in your ministry, you know, ensure that you are basically raising up other leaders to continue the work because we are not going to be there forever, uh, uh, for eternity in that role and position. We will move out. God can move us to a different place. God can also uh, lead us to a different ministry or we can move on to glory. Uh, but, you know, if you're not going to raise up leaders who will... Uh, continue the work, uh, then, you know, whatever we have uh, labored in the Lord uh, can, uh, you know, uh, be a, uh, can come to a full stop or, you know, uh, uh, will be sad that no one is there to uh, take on with it and run with it. And we see, uh, you know, uh, Paul, the apostle, uh, he, along with, um, you know, doing his own business and also uh, writing epistles, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, building, raising up churches, ministering to people, going to places, being an apostle, being a pioneer, going wherever people have not gone and uh, ministering uh, the gospel to the Gentiles. We also see him, you know, investing in the lives of people, training a lot of uh, people uh, to carry on the work. And then he, uh, you know, trains them and he gives them uh, different roles and um, responsibilities. And so we see that, you know, in Acts chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, we read that Paul found a young man in Lystra called Timothy, and he made him part, he made Timothy part of his team. He nurtured Timothy, uh, helped him to grow in the faith, and um, brought him to a position where he saw him fit enough to minister uh, who could do the work of the ministry uh, because um, Timothy had also grown in his walk with the Lord, the, in his faith and walk with God and also had seen how Paul was ministering. And then, you know, Paul leaves him at Ephesus, one of the major uh, port cities, one of the major uh, places where there's so many churches, um, uh, you know, there. Uh, as a young man, uh, a great responsibility to oversee the churches at uh, Ephesus. And Paul wanted somebody who was uh, able, somebody trustworthy, somebody who could uh, help in, you know, uh, uh, correcting all of the issues that were there. And uh, he la he leaves uh, uh, Timothy. We also see that he raises up Titus, uh, uh, you know, uh, how he builds up Aquila and Priscilla. And then they go over to the church at Rome and continue ministering there. Uh, Onesimus, the runaway slave of Philemon, um, how he leads him to the Lord, how he trains him up. And then we see later on, uh, you know, uh, uh, Onesimus becomes, uh, uh, you know, people uh, commentators say becomes the bishop of uh, the churches at uh, Ephesus. So, uh, you know, see how Paul raises up leaders in every uh, epistle that he writes, whether it is in his greetings or uh, whether in his, it is in his, uh, you know, the closing words of his letter, he mentions so many different people. So just basically talking of, uh, uh, that, you know, Paul is not working as a man who thinks it is I, me, myself, but, you know, alongside with other workers. And he always calls them as his co-workers, co-workers, co-laborers, co-prisoners, uh, 
uh, in the Lord. Uh, and so the same way we need to raise up uh, people because, uh, you know, if you want to build up a building, you know, um, uh, a large house or a big building will have many pillars. So in a church, if you want to raise up a big church, a big organization, it has to have many leaders, many pillars who are leaders. Okay. And uh, at APC, we know that, uh, you know, we have this, uh, byline that says you know every believer is a minister so when people come in uh, we encourage them to serve we take them from being new believers to becoming disciples to become ministers to then becoming uh, to come into places of um, uh, leadership uh, you know so uh, we create opportunities in our church where people can minister which we can serve and also places where they can be nurtured to uh, to grow into leadership uh, positions and and um, uh, responsibilities. Now, when we elevate people to leadership uh, responsibilities and positions, make sure that it's, uh, you know, not basically or purely based on skill, talents, and charisma, but they have to uh, have a godly uh, life example, uh, right heart attitudes, um, you know, um, good people relationships uh whether they're aligned to the vision and the the mission of the church these are some important things that we need to look uh, at uh, even as we give them small responsibilities and roles and when we see them fit in these areas then we give them major uh, roles and uh, leadership uh, responsibilities okay um and you know, times when people want to step out, uh, they want to leave, release them, uh, uh, and you know, uh, uh, God will bring in people to fill in that post. And also, as a leader, create opportunities for more people to minister, uh, to serve, to volunteer in various areas where they can build up, and uh, they can also sense their calling. Uh, their uh, they will uh, hear their vision, their calling, their purpose uh, for their own personal lives now as a leader when or a, 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 of a ministry team or a volunteer team or a, as a as a, you know leader of a church or a mission organization you know when there are times when people will come and um, give you some feedback about some team member or uh, some leader uh, uh, whom you have given responsibility to uh, then you know before you take action uh, you know, hear two or three other witnesses, and if it's uh, when you double check, it's verified. You know, proceed to correct that person, correct that person in private, encourage them to change, to correct in those areas. Uh, be patient with them, uh, encourage them, give them sufficient time uh, to change. But if they're still not changing, then again, you know, go on to correct. Uh, uh, them, uh, you know, help them out. Uh, but if they're still not willing, then you need to take some uh, remedial action. Uh, uh, but in case where there is a moral uh, failure uh, of the part of the person or there is some compromise in godly standards, then the corrections are more serious and, uh, you know, you need to uh, do what uh, needs to be done, uh, you know, uh, in correcting the person, helping that person, but do it in a loving, gentle way so that uh, the sin is uh, of the person is corrected uh, and the person does not feel condemned. Uh, otherwise, he will break away from the church or even from uh, his walk with um, God. Okay. Don't let inaction or negligence birth Absaloms. We know that uh, David was a good king. He had a, a heart for God. Um, uh, he was a man who's known uh, as a, a man after God's own heart, but he was not a very good father uh, for his own children. We see that uh, Absalom had a sister called Tamar, and uh, uh, Ammon, uh, who was the or Ammon, who is the half brother. Uh, you know, violated uh, uh, Tamar and then uh, did not want to marry her, sent her away after he violated her. And uh, this was something that was uh, heartbreaking for uh, Absalom because Tamar was his sister and she had to uh, live the rest of her life just like that and just imagine the pain that uh, Absalom uh, went through. And we see that uh, uh, David did not do anything about the situation. He did not take any corrective measures. And, uh, you know, um, uh, 
uh, Absalom waited for two whole years, but nothing was done. And finally, he uh, took uh, decision, made a decision, took matters in his own hands, and you know he killed uh, uh, Ammon. And what happened after that was, you know, he fled and he was in hiding for three whole years. Uh, we see that David mourned for uh, his uh, the loss of his son uh, Am Amnon, and he also see that you know he longed to look uh, to to meet Absalom, to see Absalom, uh, for Absalom to come back, but he did not do anything about it. So five years had gone past. David did not do anything about it, um, and then it was Joab. Uh, you know who was the, the commander in uh, in uh, uh, in David's army, uh, who speaks to uh, uh, David and tells him, uh, you know, to bring back Absalom. So, uh, so David says, okay. Then Absalom comes to Jerusalem, but it's two years after he comes back that David still does not meet his son. Uh, Absalom and Absalom is wanting to meet his father, but David does not uh, meet him. And uh, then finally, you know, Absalom convinces Joab to get an appointment uh, with David. Uh, so it is, um, you know, finally seven years pass by, uh, you know, before uh, Absalom uh, uh, meets his father. Uh, David, but we see that David did not do anything to heal uh, those wounds. And what happened? You know, it led to Absalom, Absalom being a, a rebel, uh, revolting against his own father David. And uh, you know, he wins the hearts uh, of uh, the people of Israel. Uh, and uh, you know, so David had to flee from Jerusalem uh, because he almost lost his throne to his own son. Uh, but you know, if David would have taken the steps uh, to correct things, uh, you know, uh, Absalom would not have come to this state, to this condition, um, uh, you know, uh, where he had to wait seven years and finally it led to him being a rebel. Okay. So, following this principle in our own lives, you know, if uh, we find people in our own team having problems, issues, don't ignore it. Have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with them. Uh, try to listen to them. Try to find out what is troubling them, bothering them. Uh, you know, uh, then help them to see things and uh, uh, the clarity. Give them clarity. Help them to understand things, resolve the issues. But if they are still not willing to resolve, they're still not willing to learn. Uh, still not willing to uh, give up their own, you know, strong things. Then we basically lovingly release them to. You know, move out of the ministry team, do something else where they are uh, more comfortable. Otherwise, we will birth Absaloms who will become a rebel, and uh, you know, it will bring about division, discord, and finally breaking up of the entire ministry or even the uh, church. Okay, don't be partakers in other people's sin. Uh, you know, there are people who uh, try to tell you to do things uh, which is not God honoring or pleasing, uh, but we need to make a decision. Pastor gives us an example here. One Sunday after church service, there's a young man uh, who said he got, uh, you know, uh, 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 he had applied in one of the Bible colleges in America to study, and uh, he wanted um, uh, a rec letter of recommendation. And he's telling pastor to write in that letter, you know, that he was a church staff and he was serving in uh, the areas. Some of the areas he mentioned to pastor said, "Please write these areas, uh, uh, you know, where I served and I was a church staff." And this man had not served in those areas. He was not even a church staff. And the pastor just simply told him, "Sorry, no, he can't do that." And that person, you know, uh, left uh, and was not seen in any of the church services after that. You know, the times when people uh, will ask us uh, as a church to write letters because, you know. Um, they want uh, admission to different places, like recommendation for jobs, things like that. Uh, or maybe, you know, people come to you uh, 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 for recommendations or statements, uh, referral checks uh, for employment or for marriage proposals. Uh, in such cases, you know, uh, uh, Pastor says, you know, usually just practice. Uh, you know, stating the actual facts. What is the truth? Just mention that, you know, don't state anything that is uh, just going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, negate those facts, uh, which can be a lie. Uh, 
say what is the fact, say what is the truth, uh, and you know, there's nothing else you can do about it. The next thing is saying no is uh, not a sin. Uh, you know, there are times when people will call you to preach uh, different places. Uh, people will invite you for different occasions, birthday parties and uh, uh, other invitations uh, for uh, wedding anniversaries and things like that. You know, uh, uh, sometimes it's not a sin to say no. Just keeping in mind what God has called you to do, what God is wanting you to do. Um, also keeping in mind your health, your family. There's only so much you can do. So there are times when we can just politely just... Uh, uh, say no, don't feel guilty about it because uh, as a leader you can't please everybody, you can't be there at all times, at all places. Uh, there are things that you need to do which God has called it to do and also keep mind uh, and keep uh, be mindful of uh, the fact that uh, you know you're accountable to God for your own life, your own family, your own health and so it's okay to say no at at times. Uh, the last thing is don't stoop down the level of your uh, accusers. Um, uh, two references here, Romans chapter 12, where Paul is saying, do not repay anyone evil for evil. And he says, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And it says, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Okay, live peaceably with all men. It says, do not overcome, uh, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with uh, good. Okay, and then uh, Titus chapter 3 verse 10 says, Paul writing to Titus says, Born a quarrelsome person once or twice, but then be done with uh, him. So, you know, there are times when, um, you know, people treat you unjustly, things that are unfair, uh, you want to retaliate, you want to, uh, you know, speak up, you want to fight back. Uh, and there's an example that Pastor gives here, there's one of a senior man, uh, who was in the ministry uh, for 17 years and part of that ministry he was doing accounting and finance uh, department and suddenly after 17 years of uh, ministering that place one fine day they just suddenly asked him to leave his job they did not give him any valid reason it was very painful he was very tempted to retaliate to question uh, because he felt what was done to him was injustice but then, like David, you know, uh, looked to God for strength. He, this man, also looked to God for strength. And God told him, you know, don't stoop down to the level of uh, your uh, accusers or to your brethren. Uh, don't become like them. Don't operate in the same level they are uh, operating. Uh, uh, they are operating out of. And God told him uh, to live above that. Okay. Um, yes, the wrong that was done was big, but, you know, God is telling him, uh, you know, be bigger than that, you know, uh, live above what they are uh, doing. So what this man, Jim, told pastor is, you know, uh, whatever you face with people, never go down to the level of doing wrong, always live up there where God wants you to uh, live, okay? So uh, when we are serving you know, whether we're in leadership positions or we're not in leadership positions, we face a lot of accusations, accusations, uh, criticisms, there'll be gossip, rumors that will be spoken about us. We cannot control everything that people say. Uh, you know, we cannot keep going and listening and talking about it. It's unnecessary waste of time and energy. But, um, you know, uh, what we need to do is, uh, like we just read in the scripture passages, do not repay anyone evil for evil, uh, but, you know, just uh, be good, be nice to everyone. Uh, and uh, we know that God is listening to their conversations. He's going to handle that. He's going to deal with it. You know, you just live above all those who are offending you uh, so that uh, you can continue to pursue what God has called you to do and uh, where God is leading you to do, and you will not be wasting your time and energy, okay? So this is chapter three, all about people, how to relate to people, um, how to help people out uh, in ministry. Any questions anyone has? Please unmute your mics, and you can speak, even online students. Uh, all of us are online, all the students are online, so all of you please uh, unmute your mics 
go ahead and ask your questions, please. I hope all of you are there and following. Yes. Are all of you there? Yes, no. Any questions? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to chapter four, uh, uh, conduct. Okay. So in this uh, chapter, we are going to basically be addressing some key issues uh, regarding our conduct, our uh, lives, our lifestyle. Okay. Um, Paul says, you know, uh, imitate me as I imitate uh, Christ. Uh, that's a very strong uh, phrase to say. You know, uh, he's saying imitate me. That means uh, he's lived such an exemplary life, uh, you know, set his life uh, uh, in such perfect order. You know, um, the way that he's lived, uh, his life has been so transparent that people can point out to anything and he's nobody is uh, able to accuse him, find fault with him. Uh, and he's saying, you know, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And, you know, the same way we need to set an example, uh, we need to set a godly standard, uh, even as each one of us are called as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, uh, we are set, uh, uh, to set an example in the way that we uh, live. And we see that Paul himself challenged people uh, to follow his own uh, example. And he tells young Timothy in uh, in First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, he says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, or don't let anyone despise you because you're young. Even young people, we have many young people here in our class, but, you know, set an example to believers in conduct, in life, uh, sorry, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in uh, truth. So he's saying, set an example in speech, the way we talk, uh, the uh, not just the way we talk, you know, what are the things that we are even talking about? Are we always discussing about people, gossiping about people, or are we talking always negative things? Uh, you know, the next thing, uh, set an example in your uh, conduct, how you live, uh, basically how you manage your time, your energy, your uh, finances, uh, the money that God has entrusted to you, the relationships that God has given to you in love, says how we love people, how we care for them, uh, in the spirit, you know, uh, in matters regarding to uh, uh, the heart, you know, uh, what, why we are doing what we are doing, what are our motives, our attitudes behind what we are doing. In faith, you know, with uh, in total trust and dependence on our Lord, uh, you know, uh, doing what he's asked us to do, following his word. And in purity, which means, you know, living our life uh, in, in utter holiness and godliness in, in every aspect of our life, in every area of our life, in uh, every day-to-day -day things that we are in involved in, in, in and we are uh, engaged in. So even in little things, uh, you know, uh, where we usually don't uh, you know, consider it or goes unnoticed, uh, those are little things where we can open the door to the evil one. So even the little things, we need to practice uh, holiness and um, uh, godliness, okay? Um, so here Paul is writing uh, in Philippians chapter 3, he says, Brethren, join in following my example and note those who, who so walk as you have us for a pattern. So he's saying, you know, just follow my example. And he's saying, you know, uh, uh, just the way that I'm living, the way I'm walking, I'm doing things, my attitude, you know, it's like a pattern that you can just follow, follow my uh Pattern. And he says, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So look at Paul, you know, he's saying in every area of life, it's been so transparent, so open, uh, so godly. Uh, every area which be transformed by the holiness and godly uh, and living in utter godliness uh, and he's able to say in all of those areas whatever you saw heard uh, you see me do you've received from me learn from me just 
follow that as a pattern in life. And that is what we also need uh, to move towards, that in every area of our life, you know, we are living in holiness and uh, godliness. You know, our life uh, example speaks the loudest. Um, uh, we've already spoken about it. Uh, you know, uh, we can be great preachers, teachers, uh, great worship leaders. We can sing well. We can play good musical instruments. Uh, we can be very skilled at that. We can be great prayer warriors. Um, but, you know, uh, it's our attitudes. It's uh, the way we speak, the way we live, it's the way we do things is what is going to stick in the minds of uh, people. People will forget the songs we have sung. People will forget, uh, you know, what we prayed for. People will forget the, the messages that we have preached, but um, they will not forget what they have, uh, how they have seen us live, what they have seen us do. That will be remembered for a lifetime. So our action speaks louder than our uh, words, okay? Uh, the example here given is about Cain and Abel. Uh, you know, Abel did what was acceptable in the eyes of God. And scripture says that though he is dead, you know, he still speaks. That means what he has done, uh, uh, the memory of him is still there. We still speak about him, even though it's like thousands of years past. So we see that, uh, you know, what sacrifice Abel bought, he bought the best for God. You know, he bought the fat uh, 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 offerings, the one that pleased God's heart. But we know that Cain just bought some something. You know, uh, his motive, his attitude was not right in what he was uh, giving to God. So uh, even after thousands of years, Abel, uh, we're just still speaking about Abel's example. And so, uh, you know, even though uh, we are long dead and gone, you know, uh, our life uh, will speak volumes and what people have seen us do, say us do, is what uh, they will speak about, okay? Uh, the next thing is work hard. Um, you know, uh, sometimes we think that, uh, you know, God has given us gifts, he's given us grace, um, uh, and we are very happy about it. But uh, that is very good. But we need uh, to, you know, use those gifts and grace. Uh, and basically, God has given that to us to build his kingdom, to edify his body, to extend his kingdom here on um, uh, earth. So, you know, if you want to be fruitful in God's kingdom, then we need to uh, be willing to work hard. We need to stretch beyond what is easy and comfortable. We need to make sacrifices. We need to go the extra mile. Okay. Look at uh, Paul the Apostle himself. He was such a learned man. Uh, he knew the Old Testament so well. He received, uh, you know, the silent years of Paul's life, the 17 years silent years, the years that he spent in Arabia, two years where he received immense revelations that we read in uh, his epistles. You know, uh, he could have taken life so easy. He could have just trained people. He could have just sat and he could have told people, do this, do that. But we see, in spite of uh, the dangers that he was facing from the Jews, uh, we see that he was traveling to different places, going, uh, being a pioneer, an apostle, going to places, uh, the unreached places where the gospel was not preached, uh, ministering to the Gentiles, fighting, uh, building up leaders, so many things that he did, which he did not have to do because you know, he was basically a learned man, educated man. Uh, he was uh, a Pharisee, uh, you know, from the tribe of Benjamin and all of those things. He had great credentials, uh, a well-to-do man, but we see him laboring hard for the Lord, uh, you know, stretching beyond what was easy and comfortable. We, we see he writes in Corinthians that uh, the hardships that he faced, he was, he made sacrifices. He was able, he was willing to go the extra uh, mile. He labored uh, for the uh, Lord. And he says that, you know, uh, uh, he says that, you know, he's, uh, he says, I've labored more abundantly than all the other uh, apostles. And uh, this could be the reason why God so powerfully and greatly used him. And we see, uh, you know, God expanding his uh, um, ministry. So if you want to God to use you mightily and greatly, then you need to be willing to work hard, to stretch beyond what is easy and comfortable. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be painful, uh, but it's worth it for the kingdom of um, uh, God. Okay. Um, 
uh, and it's important uh, in whatever God has called us to uh, give your hundred percent. You know, even as you are students now, give your hundred percent into you know uh, learning everything that is is being uh, uh, taught to you, everything that is uh, being uh, you know given to you. You know, the revelations, the truths, uh, please spend time, give your hundred percent in going back and spending uh, time in just studying and going through everything so that, you know, you could be equipped uh, to be a minister of God. But you know, God is going to look at how sincere you are and how you're using your time, uh, even as you are a Bible college student, whether you're using your time, uh, you know, uh, in a worthwhile way, whether you are uh, using the time to study, to uh, read his word, uh, to go back on the notes, uh, to learn, to equip yourself uh, so that you can be one who is trained, who correctly divides the word of truth. And uh, when God sees you're sincere in studying, uh, because this season is a season where God has called you to study. It's not a season where you've come here to learn, uh, you know, things just like, now doing other things, but it's a time where you are here in the season to study his word, to know more about him, uh, to build yourself up uh, and acquaint yourself in the word of God, the truths, the revelations, the doctrines. And, uh, uh, you know, depending on how faithful you are in the season, God will move you uh, into the next uh, season. So in this season, give your 100% um, uh, to God. Next thing is walk humbly. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 and 1st Peter chapter 5 verse 6. Can somebody read that please? Uh, those two verses in that under the point walk humbly. Anyone quickly? Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. 1st Peter 5 6. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Thank you so much. So here we see that, you know, who are blessed, the meek, and what uh, the meek are those who are humble, you know, they shall inherit the earth. Uh, you know, when we humble ourselves, uh, you know, under God's mighty hand, he will exalt us. So, you know, uh, the key uh, in Christian ministry or to being a minister of God or, you know, uh, all of us are a royal priesthood and God will plant us in different places, uh, you know, whether in the business field or being a teacher or, you know, in different vocations. Uh, humility is what God is looking for. Uh, we know that uh, Jesus himself humbled uh, himself, you know, Philippians chapter 2, we read that, you know, uh, who gave him, uh, gave up everything. Uh, 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 of the attributes of God and humbled himself and took upon himself uh, the role of a servant of being a man you know he emptied himself of being God and took and humbled himself of being uh, uh, sorry he, he emptied himself of being God and humbled himself of being a man he took upon the role of being a servant and uh, you know he walked in submission uh, to the will of God to the word of God and uh, you know, to uh, to doing what uh, God the Father had sent him to do, and you know, God is looking for humility in uh, in our lives as well. You know, uh, we need to have uh, humility where we are walking in submission to God, and not, uh, you know, when uh, we are uh, humble before God, it will translate in us being humble before man. But if you are not humble before man, if you are not willing to listen to, uh, you know, authorities, those God who is, God has placed in leadership leadership position above us, if you are not humble enough to submit to them, to listen to them, then this is a person who is not even able to humble themselves before uh, God. Because if we are able to humble ourselves before God, we will humble ourselves before man. Because uh, John says, if you know, one, one John says, if we cannot love um, our brothers who we see, how can we love God who we cannot see? Right? The same principle applies here uh, in humility as um, well. 
Okay, so Romans 12 verse 3 says, you know, uh, do not uh, think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but think of yourself in sober judgment. Uh, you know, so we need to be humble enough to relate with all kinds of people, rich, poor, uh, whether intellectual, whether simple people, uh, people who are mature in the faith, whether people who are weak in the faith, uh, you know, at the same time, whether you are a, a mature believer, mature leader, you just stand alongside with other believers believers the same level uh, you know no matter uh, whether you are a leader a great pastor anointed person uh, you know just uh, uh, stand the same level as uh, others don't uh, you know uh, seek places of importance uh, uh, you know uh, always want to be recognized and applauded in public if you're not recognized if you're not applauded for something that you've done then you get very disappointed and we see people are very disappointed they leave the team they don't they stop volunteering in church they stop coming to church and they you know start uh, church hopping from place to place uh, so you know it's important that uh, uh, you know, you uh, humble yourself so that you're not looking for all of these things. And even if these things don't come your way, you know, you're just saying, God, I'm doing all this for your glory, uh, for your kingdom's sake, so your kingdom can be uh, built up. So whether I receive recognition or not, applause or not, whether I'm recognized or not, God, I'm doing this for your glory's sake. I'm doing it for the extension of your kingdom. What I'm doing, I want people to be built up. I want people to know you. I want people to experience you. I want people to experience your joy, your peace. Peace, uh, uh, your intervention, your healing, uh, your deliverance, God, that is my agenda. So people can experience you. Not that people will know me, but people will experience you and will you will receive all the glory and uh, honor. So we want, have to walk in such a manner where we're walking in humility. Uh, so humility does not engage in self-promotion, is satisfied to wait for God to bring exaltation. Okay, uh, when God exalts us, you know, that is when no one can do anything about it. And uh, God is one who raises up uh, and exalts us. And humility is a true strength. Uh, it is a place where God releases even more grace. So you want to move mightily in the gifts of the Spirit. You want to be used mightily by God. Uh, you want to flow in uh, 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 in the mighty anointing of God, we need to come to a place of humility. And that is where Jesus was. And that is why we see Jesus had, a, um, uh, you know, uh, the anointing without measure because uh, he was willing to submit himself to God the Father. He humbled himself, uh, took upon himself the role of being a servant, of being a man, and humbled himself to doing what the will of the Father uh, uh, was. Okay. The next thing is we need to pursue peace. Um, uh, like we said earlier, you know, Romans chapter, uh, can somebody read that please? Three references there quickly, 2 Timothy 2, Romans 12 and Hebrews 12, 14. Can somebody read that? Second Timothy 2, verse 23 and 24. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient. Romans 12, verse 18. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Thank you, Rin. So here uh, we see that, uh, uh, you know, um, Paul is uh, uh, telling uh, Timothy, the church at Rome, uh, the writer of Hebrews is telling us, you know, uh, don't quarrel, don't get into unnecessary, foolish, uh, uh, you know, disputes, um, you know, that will just end up in uh, strife and division, it says the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Okay, so here we don't just think about Lord serving as a pastor, as a apostle, prophet, missionary, but all of us are priests. Uh, yes, this is also uh, talking about pastors and those in leadership responsibilities, but all of us together as uh, who are called, uh, you know, the priests of God, uh, you know, that is our calling. We must not quarrel. We must be gentle with everyone. We must be patient, able to teach. And uh, and Paul is, uh, you know, very beautifully writing the church at Rome because he knows the situation of the Christians at Rome. They're going through so much of persecution, the way they're being treated, uh, 
uh, you know, he's saying, as far as possible, as much as it depends on you, he says, live peaceably with all men. You know, it's difficult to live peaceably with all men, but as far as possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably. And he says, pursue peace with all people and holiness, uh, without which no one will see the Lord. Okay. Uh, so don't avoid. Uh, uh, getting into uh, arguments contentions strife keep yourself strife free uh, you know um, uh, strife basically opens the door for all kinds of uh, uh, evil okay uh, and also waste your time and energy um, and if you are somebody who is always quarreling fighting with others it is uh, you will you know you're behaving out of your carnal nature uh, and you are not uh, you know as ministers of god because it says here in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 so paul is writing the church at Corinth, he's saying you are still carnal for where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? So those people who are engaging in, in, in fighting and in quarreling and in backbiting and gossiping, uh, they're actually not doing it, uh, the Spirit of God. Uh, they're doing it out of their own carnal uh, nature. And we see that this kind of nature uh, eventually brings about division and a uh, breakdown. So when someone someone accuses you, criticizes you, provokes you, harms or tries to hurt you, uh, you know, uh, uh, ask yourself, you know, is it worth the time to just talk back, argue, uh, try to defend yourself? Because sometimes it's not worth it. Uh, you know, sometimes we do not clear, clarify the misunderstanding. Uh, you know, uh, but if it's your mistake, just apologize, uh, you know, uh, try to bring about peace. And if the person is not uh, trying to, you know, pursue peace, then there's nothing that you can do. You've responded in the right way. Uh, do what it takes to promote peace. And if they're not willing, just let go. Okay, because they are accountable to God for their own actions. Uh, an example given here is about Nehemiah. You know, uh, Nehemiah who went to build the wall of Jerusalem. It was not easy. Uh, you know, Sanballat, Tobiah, Grisham, and the Arabs were trying to stop the work. They mocked him. They made fun of them, and came to an extent where, you know, one hand uh, people were holding to their bow and arrow. The other hand, they were holding on to their instruments in which they were building uh, the wall. And we see that, uh, you know, uh, 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 continuously Sanballat and uh, the other men sent word to uh, to Nehemiah. We read this in Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. They sent messengers uh, saying that, uh, you know, um, uh, why don't you leave your work and come down here? Uh, you know, we want to uh, discuss things uh, with you. Um, uh, you know, come let us meet together in the villages on the uh, on the plain of Ono. Uh, but uh, Nehemiah knew that, you know, they were trying to harm him. So he said, uh, you know, uh, how can I leave all the work that I'm doing uh, and come down? Because if I leave the work, you know, the work will stop. Um, uh, so he did not go. And four times, you know, these messages came, but he answered the same thing uh, all the four times because he knew that, uh, you know, going there was a waste of time. He was also going to lose his job. And these people were not for peace. They were just there to uh, stop the uh, work. So what he did was he continued to focus on what God has called him to do, to building the walls. Uh, and he continued doing that. And uh, he completed the work. And, uh, you know, so the same thing we need to do, focus on what God has called us to do, um, you know, settle matters quickly as far as possible, do things peacefully, and keep going on with the work that God has entrusted with. Uh, to you okay Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 said blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of uh, God the next thing is um, you know um, uh, the conduct that we need to imbibe in our lives is be teachable uh, you know if any first uh, Corinthians 8 verse 2 says if anyone thinks that he knows anything he knows nothing yet as he ought to uh, no. So, you know, all of us uh, have to keep learning. Uh, so let's be teachable, open to correction, open to feedback, suggestions, take what is right. Um, you know, um, uh, don't think that we are the only people who are called by God uh, to be pastors and uh, leaders and ministry leaders and all of that. So we are in a position where we know everything. 
uh, you know, we don't need correction, we don't need improvement, we all do need that. And it's good for to hear people's feedback so that we can improve, that we can learn and we can uh, get better in what we are uh, doing. Okay, uh, we need to understand that God can even use children to speak to us a word in a, in a season in our lives. Uh, so regardless of who we are, what we have done, what we've accomplished for the Lord, you know, we need to be teachable. Uh, we need to heed uh, uh, instructions and rebuke and correct ourselves. The next one is as far as possible, keep your word uh, do not, uh, or do not uh, promise it. Okay. Uh, Psalms chapter 15 verse 4 says, keep your word even when it uh, costs you. Okay. There are times when we make promises to people and, prom and people are expecting us to follow up, to do things what uh, we promised them we will do. But if we don't keep up our promise, people will lose uh, their trust in us. They'll feel hurt. They'll feel let down. They'll feel disappointed. They can even leave the church and go away. So, you know, as far as possible, keep your promise. If you can't keep it, don't make a promise. Uh, if you forget, just say, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, I'll follow up with it. It'll get back to you in a day or two or whatever. Or if you could not do it, you know, just say, I'm here, I'm busy. You know, I couldn't do it, uh, but I've, I've, you know, not forgotten about it just give me some more time and i'll help you uh, with this so uh, look at what paul says in second corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 uh, can somebody read that please second corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 is in italics can somebody read that please second corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? Or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no? Thank you. So, uh, you know, uh, Paul is saying that he, when he says yes, when he says no, it's not according to his flesh, but it's just, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we make promises to people, uh, learn to keep those promises. Uh, you know, but sometimes we're not perfect, uh, you know, we don't keep it, just uh, apologize and uh, learn from it. Look at what Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 37 says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, for whatever is more than this, this is from the evil one. Uh, the next two points, uh, or a few points is respect other people's time, be punctual, always you know if you're saying bible study starts at 6 30 start at 6 30 any meeting you're having start at 6 30 honor the person one or two people who've come honor their time uh, they've made the effort to come on time there honor them uh you know but if you are not keeping time first of all you're lying uh, to people secondly you're doing injustice to people who have made the effort to come on time thirdly we're incul inculcating the wrong habit by starting late we it just gives people uh, room next time say okay it's okay you know they'll wait for us five ten minutes they'll start late so it doesn't matter uh, but if you start on time you're teaching people the importance of time uh, when people can go to time for a movie or for uh, to the airport or to the railway station uh, to catch their bus or train or flight you know uh, when it comes to god we need to have that same sense of punctuality and the same sense of uh, uh, honoring god with even our uh, time okay there are sometimes when you know we start late because it's raining or the weather is bad or whatever we can or there is something with uh, you know the systems that are not working uh, you know we can just start at those times a little late, one or two minutes late or five minutes late people understand but you know as far as possible you know honor people's time when they give you an appointment start on time be there on time be ahead of time because you're just honoring God even with your time when you uh, do that, okay? Uh, we will do the next um, uh, three points in the next class. Anyone has any questions before we close? Anyone has any questions? No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, so... Uh, We'll end class. I'll uh, see you next Friday. Uh, all of you have a um, good
good uh, weekend and a good week ahead. God bless you and see you next week. Thank you, Adela. Thank you, everyone, for joining class. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Thank you for uh, the in-person students. Sorry, I couldn't. Uh,